has done. He has done great, great things. The Lord has done so many. suffering from ailments, those who are going through situations that they have tried to fix themselves but only God can fix. Right now we want to pray for Ebony as she's struggling with her back right now. We want to pray that God would touch her body even while she's here in this service. There may be somebody else here that is in need of prayer. And certainly before we go forward into the service, we want everybody's spirit to be free to worship. We don't come here for form nor fashion, but we come to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. So as we come today, we want to put everything else to one side and lift up the name of the Lord. If you know this song, I want you to sing with us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is Bless His Bless His holy. If you're able to stand in the house, I wonder if you'll stand. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Oh, I'm gonna bless you.
however you know how to pray. However you know how to talk to God. At this time, we're bringing everything before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you alone are God. You are the only wise God. You are the almighty God. There is none like you. There's none beside you. Father, we look to you as humbly as we know how. Father, we know that you know us. We cannot fool you, Father, so we come before you. Knowing that, Father, without you, Father, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. Heavenly Father, as we stand or we sit before you, Father, search our hearts, our minds, our thoughts. And bring everything into subjection to worship you, Father. Let your name be glorified in this place today. Let there be a miracle in this place today. Let this not just be another service, Father, but someone will hear a word from you and will give their hearts and their lives to you. Heavenly Father, right now we come before you and we bring before you the sick. Father, every single one of us, you created us. You know everything there is to know about us. You put our organs in place. You put our bones in place, our muscles, our veins. You put the blood to run through our system. Father, because you know what to do, Father, we call on your name. And we pray for healing in the bodies and in the minds of your people. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will remove anything that is unlike you. Father Jesus, right now we come before you, Jesus, on behalf of those who cannot pray for themselves. Father, we intercede on their behalf, Father. We pray for a breakthrough for them. We pray, oh God, that your anointing flow, let your presence be in this place. Oh God, we need you, we need you. Father, let it be in our songs, in our speech. Father, in everything, Father, we give you thanks. And in everything, we will bless your holy name. Father, right now, you know those who are going through situations, Father. They have tried everything, but right now, we pray, oh God, you will speak to their hearts and their minds. Oh God, that let them know that if they'll just turn to you, everything will be all right. So, Heavenly Father, be in our midst. Show up here in your house this day for those watching online. Father, we pray for a blessing on them also. We pray, Heavenly Father, that whatever they're in need of, as they pray according to your will, we believe right now that it is done. And for that, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. Help us right now, Father, for the music, for the singers, for the speeches, anything that be said and done for the baby that has come to be blessed we pray right now oh god that everybody and everything will be done in decency and in order we give you thanks now and forevermore and our glad hearts say say amen again put your hands together in praise unto our god we're gonna bless his name come on put your hands together let us clap as we sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, hallelujah, oh.
Hallelujah. Right where you are, give the Lord some praise this morning. Clap your hands. Raise your voices. Lift your hands. Give the Lord a wave offering. We're in his house today to give him worship, to give him honor, to give him glory. He is worthy of it this morning. Hallelujah. Church, you know, I we, we recently came out of the Easter season, and um, we spoke about Palm Sunday when the, the people got excited when they saw Jesus riding into Jerusalem, and they grabbed palm trees, and began to throw down their cloaks and being sing Hosanna and they began to worship him. And then we often talk about the week afterwards they were saying crucify him. But if we look at that moment there on that Palm Sunday, there were those there that didn't understand the worship. There were some Pharisees there that said, Jesus, why are the people carrying on like this? And Jesus said, if they don't worship me, these rocks are gonna cry out. <laughs> So what that tells me is that all of creation knows who he is. And if you this morning can get an understanding and a revelation of who Christ is, you also should worship. You should also praise. You should also clap your hands. You should also throw up your palms in the air and say, thank you, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen, church? Hallelujah. So we're gonna start by singing this, this hymn. I will praise him.
name. Hallelujah. There's no reason to continue sitting down. We're here to give God praise this morning. As long as you can stand on your feet, you should be on your feet to give him glory. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, how we love you.
give you praise, Lord, because you're worthy of it all, Lord. I put aside, Lord God, everything that's happened this week, everything I've been through, every circumstance, Lord, and I just give you praise, Lord, because you're worthy, God, just because you're God. God, if you've done nothing for me, Lord, I would still give you praise because you're God. And you're worthy, Lord, of it all. You're worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Be praised, O oh God. And have the very praises of your people this morning, God. Let your spirit flow in this place, Lord. Get all honor and glory, Lord, into your name, God. Because you are worthy of it, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. At this, at this time, we will have morning scripture reading. And our morning scripture reading is taken from Psalm 34. And we're going to read from verses 1 to 14. So once again, that is Psalm 34, verse 1 through 14. And it reads on this wise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want in, to them that fear him. The young lions do lack, and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and lo loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and keep thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. So at this time, we will look to receive this morning tithes and offering. If you can stand as we say a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be in your house this morning to give you worship, Lord Jesus, and to give you praise, Lord God. We know we could be otherwise minded, and we know we could be elsewhere, Lord, but there's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. And so God, we pray this morning as we 
bring in, Lord Father God, our offerings, Lord Jesus, um, into your temple. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless it, Lord, and I pray that you would use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. We ask those of you that you please bless those that can give and those that are not able to give monetarily, Lord Jesus. Have thine own way in this that's the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let's magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised.
be seated, please be seated in the house. Thank you, Sister Karen. And thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of this service today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. There is one name given on the heaven whereby we must be saved. And that name is the name Jesus. It's at that same knee that, it's that same name that every knee is going to bow. There will be no choice. We just have to bow at that name. Every single tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. Every child of God should be happy about that. Amen. That we are going to confess that he is Lord. I just want to check that Ebony is good to go. We can give you as long as you need. All right, we don't want you in any more discomfort than what you're already in. But we certainly welcome your family and your friends to this service, to Bethel today, to worship the Lord with us. Amen. Thanking God for all of you. And I, I want to, even in this dedication on this blessing of this baby, you may note that a lot of the songs that we've been singing and the way that we've been singing them, giving adoration unto our Lord, that we are blessed people. Amen. And the word blessed has been used a lot. We use that a lot. We would say, even when somebody sneezes, people will say what? But do we even know what? we are saying when we are saying bless you and when we are saying we are blessed what does it actually mean we bless a child but what are we doing when we bless a child when God blesses us what actually happens here and I think it's important in fact know it's important that even before I go any further, that we understand what it means to be blessed. Because there's a song, and I, I think they do it in Calypso or something, I am blessed, I am blessed every day of my life. I am blessed when I wake up in the morning when I lay my head to rest, and we just, I, I nearly said boogie down with it, but we do something. <laughs> We do something while we're singing that song. But you see, to be blessed is to actually be protected by God. It's a divine protection. It means a few things, but in the Christian sense, it is invoking divine protection. And... I recognize that no matter where I go, no matter what happens, there is a wall around me. The enemy cannot trouble me. He may try because sometimes that wall may have a crack in it. But God has built a hedge around every one of his people. And in fact, I'd go as far as to say, even when we don't recognize it, God has a hedge around us. It's not so much the things that we know he has kept us from, but what about the things he's kept us from we knew nothing about? Or we knew that we closed our eyes and went to sleep, and the next thing we knew we woke up. But what happened in between? But somehow God in his mercy and his grace that he protected us so when I wake up in the morning I just say I am blessed now when I walk along the street 
and the cars are passing me by. God protects me that not one of the cars mount the pavement and hits me. So I just say, I am blessed. When the enemy would want to destroy me, he would use all kind of things to destroy me. But I come up stronger and finer than gold because I am blessed. We should not take it for granted. Everything that we have, it's because of God. God has protected us. So we are going to have a prayer of blessing, prayer of dedication unto God for our child today. Now our child today, Luca Ray. Luca Ray, I guess I pronounced that right. Yes. And the next part is journey, right? Okay. Luca Ray Journey Burnett. We are going to dedicate to the Lord today. And it's uh, always a privilege to be able to bless a child. And I think it's always good to note that the parent has willingly brought their child to be blessed. There's never any forcing of anything in this church. But when a mother or a father says to us they would like their child to be blessed, I just find a convenient date in order to do it. And today is that day where Ebony has brought Luca Ray Journey Burnett. Now, I'm going to spell it for you. L-U-K-A-H hyphen R-A-E. I'm going to want it on the board. Brother Xavier, and I'm going to want this on the board, so I'm going to spell it one more time. L-U-K-A-H hyphen R-A-E. Middle name. J-U-R-N-E-E. Journey. Should it be Janae? <laughs> My granddaughter is named Janae. You want to change your name? You want, you want, shall, we, shall we change it? No? Okay. <laughs> it will be the first baby dedication. We just changed the name right there. Right? The first one I ever done. And Burnett, B-U-R-N-E-T-T. <laughs> Man. But Ebony, I don't want to make you laugh too much because I know it's going to hurt your back. I know it will. But, but I'm pronouncing it just fine for her. Just fine. All right. So you may need to be seated um, for the um, ceremony. But I just need you to be comfortable, okay? We will come to you. And so... Could I have um, our female ministers just come and stand? Minister Bev, Minister Christine, Minister Pauline, Minister Claude, just stand. Just while the children's ministries are getting ready. As they leave us for a short while. It's important that whenever we come into the house of the Lord that we are focused on God. I have never done a child dedication where any of the parents have been in discomfort. But I believe that God is in everything. And I believe that God's will will be done and that Ebony all is well. That the discomfort, the pain will go because God is on her side. God is there with her. 
Amen. It is also very easy to get distracted. Because if the enemy can distract us, thank you singers, we will miss what God has in store. So in order to miss what God has in store, he would distract us. Just for a few minutes. Wash me over again. Wash me over again in your precious blood. Wash me over again. Wash me over again. Wash me over again. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Thank you, singers. Have you ever made a promise? Made a promise that at the time when you made the promise, you had all intentions of keeping it. I promise you I won't be late. I promise you I love you forever. I just thought I'd drop that one in. I promise you I'll give you back what I owe you. And when we make these promises, there is no doubt in our minds, for the most part, that we will keep our promise. Promising someone something gives hope to the person who the promise has been made to. So I promise you I won't be late, so I turn up on time but the one who made the promise is not there so what I thought about the person or I thought that they would be there for me they are no longer there so I have to do whatever it is on my own promise broken Spoken to you and know how you feel. You feel let down. You feel that 
how could this thing be? Because I really thought that you were going to keep your word. But the promise has been broken. Broken to the extent that you say to yourself, I won't trust that person again because they promised me and they didn't deliver. Have you ever been the one who have broken the promise and maybe even through no fault of your own, but you feel bad that I really wanted to keep this promise, but circumstances has been that I wasn't able to come through. Well, it's the same with the word of God that we read and the songs that we sing. A lot of the songs we sing promises God a whole lot of things. Jesus, I'll go through with thee. Though despised, forsaken, Jesus, I'll go through with thee. And the tune is lovely and we sing it. But then troubles and trials come. Persecutions come and we struggle along the way. We read, I will bless the Lord. How often? At all times. And what else? His praise shall continually be where? In my mouth. Now, that already is a promise. Because I will, definite, not I might, or I'm thinking about, we read, I will. I am going to bless the Lord at all times, not sometimes. So, I now have the definite article in will and all. I will at all times. We read that. His praise shall sometimes be in my mouth. Ain't nobody correcting me this morning. So I can just preach whatever I want to preach. And somebody just say amen because the pastor said it. That's why it's important to read the word of God for ourselves. That we do not take the word of the one who's standing in front of us, but we look in the word of God to check if what is being said is what the word of God says. So I have now made my promise, my commitment to the Lord that in spite of everything, no matter what I am going through, I am going to bless the Lord. You see, when I am blessing the Lord, I am recognizing his sovereignty. I am recognizing his holiness. Lord, I recognize you as the one and only divine help that I have. So I am blessing you. I am giving you thanks. I promise you, God, that I am going to do this at all times. Now, even when we are going through, whatever we're going through, Many times people would say, if there was a God, why does this happen? And if there was a God, why does that happen? But because I have promised God that I'm going to bless him at all times, even when things are not going the way I want them to go, I am going to bless him anyhow. Yes, it does get difficult. Difficult at times. You know, you're traveling along the road. You may have had a blowout as you're traveling on the road and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. But that is a time to bless the Lord. I always say to people, why would you curse out? Because that's the opposite of blessing. You either bless or you curse. Why would 
you curse out the only one that can help you. Can you imagine, just a while ago, the paramedics came and they were talking to Ebony. Can you imagine if she turned around and says, or let me put it another way, started to be rude to them. They have come to aid, but then she is rude. How would they feel? Well, I am here to help you. That is the same with God. God says, I am here to help you. Why are you cursing me out? I am here for you. I am here to give you life and life more abundantly. Now, I ask you to trust me because you may not believe me, but God is saying to you that I am the only one that can help you. And so whilst I'm the only one that can help you, I am asking you to trust me because there's no one else here that can give me eternal life. There's nobody else here that can save me from danger. There's nobody else that can provide for me but God himself. So I recognize now as a child of God that I will go through some stuff. I recognize that things will happen to me. It will happen to those I love. It will happen to those even in my road or my vicinity, in my company. Things will happen because God did not promise us to have an easy ride. But he says, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So if God, no, not if, since God has said he is with me all the time, I take him at his word. Why? Because God's promises are sure. God, when he makes a promise, he will never break his promise. So likewise, he's expecting from us that when we promise him something, that we keep our word. You see, sometimes we promise when we speak to somebody or we text somebody or we send it through someone else, a third party. God is not like that. God comes directly to us. He has put it in his word that he is God and he cannot lie. Lying belongs to the devil. The Bible tells us he is the father of lies. So I take God at his word that whatever he has promised, that will he do. So now, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Everything that I have within me, bless his holy name. We sang it. We sang it over and over again. He has done great things. So now let me look at all that is within me, which means my heart, my mind, my soul, my whole body belongs to God, and I am going to bless God with everything that I have. I am not going to let anything within me not bless God. How can I sing, bless the Lord, all my soul and not do what I have just sung. That's why I'm careful. I'm careful, brethren, that I look at the words that, that, that has been sung. I look at the words of the Bible and when I'm reading them or when I'm singing them, I am looking into it and says, God, help me to keep my promise. Help me, God, because maybe when I am singing it, I don't realize what it is I am singing. Maybe when I'm singing it, I am feeling good. I'm feeling on the mountaintop. I'm feeling that this is good for me. And I sing it. But then I don't recognize the importance or the, uh, the essence of it. That I have said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. The deepest part of me to bless God, to recognize his sovereignty, to recognize that there is none like him, there's none beside him. He is but God all by himself. So I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You see, the psalmist, he was singing this song. He was singing this song after God had protected him in war. 
God had protected him, you see, and he recognized in that war that, that he could not have done this by himself. He was running by from somebody called uh, Bimelech. Right, um, he, he was he was in danger of his life, but he recognized that God had protected him, and that God had had had, had been that hedge around him, that God had been that protection for him, and 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 when Abimelech um, drove him away, he, he he recognized that his life had been saved, and so he said, "I will." Bless the Lord. That wasn't me that did that. It wasn't me that woke me up this morning, so I will bless the Lord. It wasn't me that drove the car so safe, because it's not about me driving the car safe. What about somebody else who's driving on the same road? So when I get to my destination, I says, I will bless the Lord because he has brought me safe. I could not fly an airplane. So when I'm in the airplane, I am blessing the Lord at all times because he is the one keeping the plane up. Have you ever recognized in life that you look at these big jumbos? Anybody ever flown on the Airbus 380 would know the biggest plane there. And when you're in that plane, it's as if you're just standing in a room. There ain't no fussing going on up there, you know? So even though there, it, there's no fussing going on, there is a thing called turbulence. Sometimes along the way, after everybody is seated and is feeling good and they take the seatbelt sign off and we start to coast or, or cruise along at whatever miles an hour and, and then we start getting happy and then all of a sudden we hit some turbulence and, and, and the pilot says uh, put the seatbelts on and everybody says put your seatbelts on we are going to go through some turbulence and it's the same in life that sometimes we are cruising along they ain't nothing going wrong in our lives. We are getting all kind of easy in life. But all of a sudden, God puts some turbulence in the way. God puts something in the way that says, you need to recognize me. It was me that is keeping you. It ain't no skill of no pilot. It ain't the skill of the driver. It is not the skill of those around us. But it is God keeping me. So the turbulence comes and you know that when things start to go wrong, we start to cry out, cry out for help. But sometimes we can call our nearest and dearest and they're not able to help us. Let me use the, tra the plane analogy again. Ain't nobody else in my row can fly the plane. Ain't no use me calling out to them and say, could you go and fix this? But I know somebody who's holding that plane up. Just the same in the natural, the same in the spiritual. That when I hit that rocky part, when I feel down and I feel that all hope is gone, I have to recognize that only God can help me. Recognize that if it's not God, then there's nobody there. Doesn't matter who I call, doesn't matter who I try to help me. If God does not come through for me, then I am in trouble. So that's why I say I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what people say, no matter how people want to bring you down, no matter how your friends turn against you, no matter how tough life gets, just say, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. Because I've come to tell somebody today, it's just a turbulence. It's just a turbulence. But we got to keep on blessing him. we got to keep on thanking him. Because soon the sun is going to shine again. And isn't it, as I'm closing, isn't it good 
that as the sun begins to shine again, we were glad that we were giving God thanks throughout. We were forever praising him. Not once did we turn our backs on him. Not once did we break our promise. Why? Because our trust and our hope is in the almighty God. So today, whatever you may be going through, however is going on in your mind, in your thoughts, and, and, and in your being, whatever it is, I want you to know that the word of God is sure. And I'm inviting you, I'm encouraging you to bless the Lord. Give him thanks, give him glory, give him honor. Because he's the only one that can bring us through. So even today, if we don't know Jesus Christ as our personal savior, we have not given our lives to Christ come to tell somebody that if you don't do it soon it will be too late God has afforded us time to give our hearts to him he has given us time to change our ways he has given us opportunities to say God I've tried everything I have been in the world, I've tried everything, and nothing seems to be working. Today, I'm inviting you to turn your lives over to Jesus. You will understand what it means to bless him at all times. You will keep his praise forever in your mouth. And I want us to know that one day he is coming soon. He's coming back for himself. Which means that we must be like him. In order to be like him, we should repent of our sins. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be filled with his precious Holy Ghost. Otherwise, we will be left here for the devil and his angels. There is a heaven, and as sure there is a hell. And only those that belong to Christ will be going to heaven. Why would I say that? Well, that's because I believe the word of the Lord. Same way I believe I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's the same way I believe and know there is a heaven, and there sure is a hell. So I invite you today, if you're not saved, give your lives to Christ before it's too late. Let us bow our heads. As we think about whether we are saved or not, we think about, should the Lord come now, would I be ready? Would I be going with him? Should he take me now? Where would I go? Have I sung songs and made promises today that I had no intention of keeping? Have I read the word of God today that I really don't have any intention of keeping? I just come to church Sunday after Sunday and I sing the songs. I come week after week, I read the scripture, but I don't actually think it applies to me. But today, for everyone under the sound of my voice, the word of the Lord applies to all of us. So I invite you to let Jesus into your heart. Tell him, come in today. Come in to stay. Say, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm given an opportunity for those who would like to come forward, for us to pray with you, no matter what you're going through. We're just praying that God will give you strength to make it through whatever you're going through. The older workers will be here to receive you. 
into my heart into my heart come into my heart Lord Jesus come Bless you, she'll come in. Come in to stay. Come in to my heart. Lord Jesus. Into my heart. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? I, I'm inviting you to come. You may not even understand much of what I'm saying, but I'm inviting you to come. Just come in faith. Come believe in. Come in. To come in. To stay. Come in. To my heart. Lord Jesus, won't you come, won't you come? Jesus is waiting, 
with his arms open wide he's willing to supply all the needs in your life take my advice don't let this moment pass you by This moment pass you by For Jesus is willing With his arms open wide His wishes upon All the needs in your life Take my advice Don't let this moment pass you by If you would stand as we give our closing prayer, if you're able to stand, if you would stand, please, with his arms open wide, his will is to supply all the needs in your life. Take my advice, don't let this moment pass you by. good God you are. You are a great God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. Your mercies has been here for us, Father. And that's why we say for mercy so great, what return can we make? So Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that's been said and done. We thank you that you are here in our midst. We pray, Heavenly Father, for anyone here who has not yet given their life to you. Father, that you would show mercy on them, Father. That the day will not come without them giving their lives to you. That, Father, they will commit their lives to you wholly. Even for those of us, Father, who already say, Father, that you will keep us safe, Father. That you, O oh God, will continue to speak into our souls, into our spirits, Father. That we are children of the King. Father, that you have built a hedge around us, that you have protected us. Father, even as we go from here, that we will not leave your presence. Father, we will not be distracted by things of the world, but Father, we will continually praise your name. Father, we thank you for your word that we said we will bless you at all times. Every situation, Father, recognize you in it. So, Father, right now, bless us one, bless us all. Father, help us to keep our minds stayed on you, our God, our Savior. Giving you praise, giving you glory, now and forevermore. For those who are watching online, we pray, oh God, that you will bless them also. We thank you for them. Thank you, Father, that they support this ministry. And that, oh God, even if there be anyone watching online that don't know you, that you will speak into their heart and into their spirit the need to be baptized in your name and the need to be filled with your precious Holy Ghost. For it is real. You are coming back again for yourself. And Father, we need to be ready without spot nor wrinkle. Thank you, Father, for being with us today, for everything that has been said and done, for everyone who has contributed, Father, everyone who has come today, Keep us all in your care as we will forever give you praise. In your holy name, the Lord Jesus, we pray. 
amen. And say amen again. He is willing to supply all the needs in your life. Take my advice, don't let this moment pass you by. Put your hands together with none. Come on. 